Hi everyone, welcome to MR Learning Circle. So, I hope you all are fit and fine doing good in your life. So, this is the second lecture in our MCQ series of microbiology. And in this lecture, I am going to cover historical perspective part 2, starting with controversy over the spontaneous generation. So, the first question here is, the concept of spontaneous generation proposed that all living organisms arise from pre-existing life. Option A. Now, option B is microorganism can arise spontaneously from non-living matter. Option C says, germs originate only in nutrient-rich environment. Option D says, spores cause disease through airborne infection. So, the correct answer for question 1 is option B. That is, microorganism can arise spontaneously from non-living matter. And that was your spontaneous generation, that is abiogenesis. And abiogenesis proposed, life arises from non-living matter spontaneously under certain conditions. Now, question 2. Which of the following early experiments supported the idea of spontaneous generation before Pasteur's refute, refutation? So, option A is Reddy's meat and maggot experiment. Option B is Nidham's boiled broth experiment. Option C is Planzi's seal flask experiment and option D is Pasteur's swan neck flask experiment. So, the correct answer for this is option B. That is Needham's boiled broth experiment. And in 1745, John Needham, he boiled the broth, he sealed it and still he found microbial growth. And that interpreted it as an evidence for spontaneous generation. Now, Question 3. With scientists, experiment first challenged spontaneous generation by demonstrating that maggots do not arise from rotting meat in sealed containers. Your options are Option A, Francisco Reddy, Option B, Lazarus Planzi, Option C, Louis Pasteur and Option D is Robert Koch. So, the correct answer for this question is Option A, Francisco Reddy. Question number 4. Lazarus Planzi in 1765 improved upon Needham's work by option A. Using airtight sealed flask and longer boiling times. Option B. Introducing sterile air into the broth. Option C. Adding disinfectants to prevent contamination. Option D. Using agar as solidifying agent. So, the correct answer for this question is option A, using airtight seal flask and longer boiling times. Question number 5. Pasteur's swan neck experiment in 1861 is considered decisive because it, option A, used chemical sterilization instead of heat. Option B, allowed air exchange but prevented dust and microbes from reaching the broth. Option C, eliminated oxygen. Proving life requires anaerobic conditions and option D proved that all microbes are pathogenic. So, your correct answer for question number 5 is option B. So, in his swan neck experiment, the neck was S-shaped and in that S-shaped neck, all the airborne microbes got trapped and hence the broth remained sterile while the air could freely enter the broth and this disapproved the spontaneous generation theory. Now question number 6. Which statement best summarizes the logical flaws in Needham's experiment that misled, misled him towards spontaneous generation? Option A. His broth was too concentrated for microbial growth. Option B. His sterilization process was inadequate allowing spore formers to survive. Option C. His containers were oxygen free. Option D. He used non-sterile instruments to seal flasks. So, your correct answer for question number 6 is option B. His sterilization process was inadequate and that allowed spore formers to survive. Question number 7 now. Which of the following scientists work supported biogenesis, thereby refuting spontaneous generation? So, your options are option A, Louis Pasteur and Splanzi. Option B, Nidham and Aristotle. Option C, Aristotle and Van Helmont. Option D, Hook and Leeuwenhoek. So, the correct answer for this question is option A, Louis Pasteur and Splanzi. Now, question number 8. The Pasteur-Posch controversy of 1860 was primarily over. 
option a the existence of anaerobic life forms option b whether spontaneous generation could occur under pure air condition option c the nature of fermentation and option d is the role of oxygen in putrefaction so the correct answer for question number 8 is option b whether spontaneous generation could occur under pure air condition so felix posch he claimed life could spontaneously arise even in filtered air whereas pasteur's control experiment disapproved his disproved his claims so that was pasteur and posch controversy now question number 9 which of the following experimental modification would invalidate pasteur's conclusion option a breaking the swan neck tube after sterilization option b using a shorter heating time option c using unfiltered air option d all of the above so the correct answer for question number 9 is option d all of the above now question number 10 the ultimate significance of pasteur's work on spontaneous generation was that it option a introduced the germ theory of disease and aseptic techniques option b supported abiogenesis as the origin of life option c demonstrated that oxygen causes microbial growth and option d is disproved the role of microorganism in fermentation so the correct answer for question number 10 is option a so louis pasteur he laid the foundation for the germ theory sterilization and aseptic techniques in medicines and microbiology so that was for your controversy over the spontaneous generation now we have the questions from the role of microorganism in transformation of organic matter and in the causation of disease so let's start with question number 1 that is during nitrogen cycling nitrifying bacteria oxidize ammonia to nitrate which of the sequence is correct sequence of microbial activity so nitrosomonas to nitrobacter nitrobacter to nitrosomonas isotobacter to rhizobium or nitrosococcus to nitrosomonas so your correct answer for this question is option a nitrosomonas to nitrobacter so what does nitrosomonas do it oxidizes the ammonia to nitrite ion okay and then this nitrite ion is converted by the nitrobacter into nitrate ion so that is the correct sequence now let's go to question number 2 in carbon cycling methanogenic archae perform which of the following key reaction your options are option a oxidization of methane to carbon dioxide option b reduction of carbon dioxide to methane under anaerobic conditions option c fixation of carbon in photosynthesis option d decomposition of cellulose to glucose so the correct answer for this question is option b reduction of carbon dioxide to methane and this is done with the help of methanogens like methanobacterium so they reduce the carbon dioxide along with hydrogen to form methane in a strict anaerobic habitat like the sediments the rumen etc so now let's go for question number 3 the biological oxidation of sulfur compounds by thiobacillus thiooxidants results in a production of hydrogen sulfide from sulfate option b conversion of elemental sulfur to sulfuric acid option c sulfate reduction under anaerobic condition option d sulfite reduction coupled with photosynthesis so the correct answer for this question is option b conversion of elemental sulfur to sulfuric acid so this is done with the help of your thiobacillus thiooxidants now question number 4 in the phosphorus cycle microbial activity is primarily responsible for option a conversion of phosphate into phosphine gas option b solubilization and mineralization of organic phosphate option c oxidization of phosphate to nitrate option d is fixation of phosphorus into biomass irreversibly so the correct answer for question number 4 is option b solubilization and mineralization of inorganic phosphate now question number 5 actinomycetes play a vital ecological role in the soil because they option a fix atmospheric nitrogen b 
decompose complex polymers such as chitin, lignin and cellulose, C oxidize ammonia to nitrate, D cause bioluminance in decaying wood. So the correct answer for question number 5 is option B decompose complex polymers such as chitin, lignin and cellulose. Now question number 6. Which of the following correctly matches the microbial disease with its causative agent and transmission route? So your options are A. Anthrax, Bacillus anthracis, vector bond B. Is cholera, Vibrio cholerae through feco, fecal oral route C. Tuberculosis, Mycobacterium tuberculosis through fecal oral Plague, Yersinia pestis Airborne droplet. So the correct answer for this is option B that is cholera caused by Vibrio cholerae and through the fecal oral route. Now we have question number 7. Biofilm formation enhances microbial survival and virulence because A. Biofilm cells are metabolically act inactive. Option B. It allows inactive, uh, antibiotic diffusion and promotes eradication. Option C. It provides structural protection and facilitates quorum sensing. Option D is it prevents horizontal gene transfer. So, the correct answer for this question is option C. It provides structural protection and facilitates quorum sensing. Question number 8. Endotoxins differ from exotoxins mainly in that. A. Endotoxins are secreted proteins. Exotoxins are lipid based. Endotoxins are lipopolysaccharide released upon bacterial lysis. C. Exotoxins are associated with gram-negative outer membranes. D. Endotoxins act with high specificity at nanogram concentration. So, the correct answer for this question is option B. Endotoxins are lipopolysaccharides. Now, next question. Which of the following microbial interaction is mutualistic and contributes directly to organic matter transformation? Option A. Mycorrhizae Plant root association B. Delovibrio predation on gram-negative bacteria C. Parasitism in plasmodium infected RBC and D. Viral lysis of cyanobacteria So the correct answer for this question is Option A. Question number 10. In the context of disease causation, coach postulate cannot be strictly applied to A. Salmonella typhi, B. Vibrio cholerae, C. Mycobacterium leprae and D. is Bacillus anthracis. So, the correct answer for this question is option C. Mycobacterium leprae. So, that was all for historical perspective part and uh, I hope you all are even watching the short notes which I am providing in the shorts feed and if you like the video please if you this this video was useful for you then please like the video comment down below and uh, please share it with someone you find it useful to thank you for watching